All right, so we got this uh, little uh, 15 inch HP monitor. Yeah, this monitor's been around for a long time. I think my stepmother had it um, originally. And uh, been working for years. I think it came with an old Athlon machine she had or something like that. But uh, been working good for a long time. Um, it has one of those settings in it where it'll tell you how many hours is on the backlight. It is way up there. I think it's something like probably close to 60,000 hours. And uh, working great up until today. Worked great last night. This is uh, I'll leave this in the family room for the family to use. They don't need anything super huge. But uh, it's on. We have no picture. So the first thing you do with that problem is see if it's the backlights or see if it's truly the LC panel is dead. Turn on my flashlight here on my phone and I don't know if y'all can make that out or not but over here on my laptop a little focus Windows 7 with the start menu up and I have I have the uh, monitor connected to the VGA on it and if you look in there, and I know it's a pain in the ass with this glare, but and the camera doesn't want to cooperate. But anyway, you can see the outline right in there. That is the Windows 7 start menu. So we have an inverter problem on this screen. Could be the backlights have finally died. More than likely, the uh, Inverter has gone bad, probably a cap. Who knows? This is a monitor from that era of, of the bad caps. So now I gotta figure out how to get this thing apart. Heavy little bastard, and it's dirty. That's what happens when it sits in a cabinet for years. So, no screws, which means it's a pop apart cabinet. So, this will be fun to get apart. Really, really enjoy the pop apart plastic cabinets. Alright, so let me see if I can get it apart and uh, see if we can troubleshoot what is wrong with it. Alright, so to get the stand off of this thing, uh, you have this cover and then there's two uh, screws there. You gotta take those two little rubber plugs out to get the screws. You take the screws out and then this plastic cover, you just pop the plastic cover off here and then right there is a little tab Let's see if I can get a better angle on it this tab right here take a screwdriver press it in when you press it in it'll let go of the uh, it'll let go of the frame up here the tab secures to the metal frame there all right so now that we've got the stand out of the way we can see about prying this thing up and I guarantee I'm gonna have to pry it up and which sucks. Alright, that was a pain in the butt. So you got all these little clips. Which about one every 70 inches. All the way around. The big retainer lock clips are down here. What you gotta do is take something like a screwdriver. Push it into the clip to push it back. And then take another screwdriver. You can see those scar marks and pop them out and then once you get them loose and you can take a screwdriver and just put it in or a spudger or whatever you have something small preferably and then when you get it in there pop back on the plastic and you'll end up with that that's the uh that's it looks like uh handwritten on there december of uh 2007 i guess or week 12 of 20 or, tw or 2007 who knows that's a pain but at least we didn't break anything so this is actually a bin q monitor in real life so hp con contracted out with bin q to build the monitors so now what we got to do is get all these screws out of here to get the panel out should be some more over here Take the controls out to 
and get the panel out and then we can get to the uh, boards and everything behind it. Alright, so here's the panel out of the enclosure there. About nine screws to take out, maybe ten. So now we gotta get this shield off of here. Looks like two screws and then it should just slide off these little keepers here. Then we can get down to the problem. Our problem is going to probably be over here on the power supply board. And the uh, video board's over here. So let me tear it down some more. Alright, so to get this uh, panel off, you got your two uh, studs there. You got to take off on your VGA. And it should just ease itself off. Let's see. what we're looking for. This is your main board and the power supply board. Well, I don't see any exploded caps but they can't explode. They don't have poppable tops. So I'm thinking first thing to try would be to unhook one or the other of the uh, lamp leads and see if it's not a bad lamp uh, causing the inverter to shut down. So let me test that real quick. I need to put this thing on a tripod, but let me test that real quick. Alright, so I think I narrowed it down. Uh, I went through and probed for voltages everywhere. And uh, let's see here, if I can do this. So we look at like our diodes here coming in off the 12 volt power. Yeah, this is a 12 volt DC input. It's got a power brick that drives it laptop style. So if we look at our diodes here, 12 volts, come to this side of the diode, 12 volts. Check this side of this dial, which is hidden back here behind it. 12 volts. 12 volts. Alright, and then uh, let's see, this jack here, these uh, old ass Athlons, they came with uh, they came with a power speaker bullcrap and they were powered by the monitor. So if we check here, 12 volts. So, got the probing around in here, and I lose power in here. There's no power up here. So the coils aren't getting power. Um, the transformers here for the lamps aren't getting any power. Um, check these resistors. Got 12 volts on the resistors. Our problem is, if I can just hold the camera still, I should have put this on a tripod, but... I didn't feel like breaking the tripod out tonight. Our problem is, I had to look this up right here, this puppy. If you look this up, it's, it's a Bell MS, and it says 2 amps. And if you read the uh, location of the board, FP751, well, F in my mind, is fused when you're dealing with circuits. So I'll look it up. And let me zoom in on the $10 Craigslist special here. And that's exactly what it is. It's a slow blow fuse. So, if we check the incoming side of this fuse, 12 volts. If we check the outgoing side of this fuse, basically nothing. So, what I did is temporarily, and this being a a uh, 12 volt circuit and being on a power brick I'm not overly concerned with it exploding I uh, took this little wire here I made a little jumper wire and I jumpered across that fuse and sure enough if I flip the panel over and look while I'm doing that I have power backlights come on so that fuse is what's bad in here 
I don't see any reason for it to have popped other than uh, just old age. I mean, this monitor's got a ton of hours on it. So, um, I'm going to look around at my junk and see if I can find a similar fuse. I probably won't. Not sure I want to order one from DigiKey. Can't go to Radio Shack and buy a normal fuse and rig it in there because, well, we don't have a Radio Shack anymore. So, let me see what I can do to fix that fuse. At least this time it's actually a fuse and not a blowed up diode or swelled up capacitors. And these capacitors they can't even pop. You have to pop from the bottom. They don't have a they don't have tops to they don't have the cuts in the tops to make them blow up. So at least we know where the trouble is. Now I just gotta get a part to fix it with. Okay, I went and looked around at a bunch of my boards and I couldn't really find anything that I felt was uh, tr truly compatible. Um, I did pull out that uh, chassis there that I had laying at the in one of my parts boxes. It's from a 20, 25 inch Panasonic CRT, and it has a couple of these. Now they're not diodes. Uh, they go across uh, for jumpers the jumper across the circuits on the board there's no discernible writing on it that I can find so I'm pretty sure it is a fuse did a diode check it doesn't show as a diode so I think what I want to do that's about where is it that's about the same size as that so I think I'm going to tack it in there and see if it works if it pops it it pops it if not it works there'll be some sort of protection so I looked, uh, DigiKey, they no longer sell this particular fuse, and I could dig around for hours and hours and hours on there trying to find a suitable replacement, but I don't really feel like it for a monitor that, as it stands right now, is junk unless we can get a fuse working in it. So I'm going to pull the board back out, I'm going to desolder, desolder that uh, fuse and see about putting about putting that in there and see if it works. I think it just popped for fatigue. I don't think we have it. I mean, we do have a lot of bad weather here. I, I am in the lightning capital of the world, but there hasn't been any anything big in the last day or so until tonight, and it was already dead this morning. So, anyways. So real quick, while the uh, iron's warming up. I want to do a continuity check across this fuse. It's weird. You get continuity for a split second and then nothing. See, and then it's gone. So, what kind of fuse is this causing this? Huh? Fuses I've ever had to replace, they either work or they don't. No intermittent mess. This is intermittent. So, and then it's just goes into overload. Very strange. Well, we know it's a fuse because we looked it up. It's a slow blow fuse. Right there. According to what I got off of it, it was a Bell MS 2 amp. If you look it up, it's a fuse. I think these are fuses that were across the jumpers, the uh, jumper sections on the uh, CRT board. And they are already pretty close to the same 2 amps because, I mean, you're running a ton of juice through a CRT board compared to a, this. So we put it in there. I mean, hell, the worst that happens, it blows up. Test continuity across it. So we get constant continuity. Whereas on this, well, now I get nothing. So get a little bit, then it goes away. Get a little bit, goes away. Oh, 
I looked up on DigiKey, they don't have this part anymore. I could probably find one, but I would have to look forever. I found a service manager for this monitor, but HP contracted out to make a bunch of different versions of it. So this is a BenQ version. There's another version of it that's a completely different board. It's got huge uh, coils on it. Only well, it has one uh, transformer for the backlights. Because these puppies here, they take your incoming voltage and step it way up to drive the uh, CFLs in the back of the panel. I don't think that's hot enough yet. But we will certainly try it. Let's see. This is not hot enough yet. Well, we got that one. Far now, come back. Not gonna come willingly, are you? You're loose. Sometimes they need a little persuasion. Funny in circuit, we get a little bit through it, but now that we're not in circuit, we get nothing through it. Yep, 
completely dead. I doubt y'all will be able to read that, but the camera's not going to focus on that. I can't hold it steady enough. But anyway, it's a bell. Bell MS 2A fuse. So, I guess we'll try putting one of these in it. This came out of a CRT. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then no will. Yeah, you can even tell it was a fuse. It has the uh, fuse label on there. Indicating that it was a fuse. Mm. I believe that's what these are out of the CRT. They go across the jumpers. Normally you have jumpers like that's a jumper there. And there's another jumper there. There's one there next to that resistor. And there's a bunch of these in that CRT that go there. They're labeled as jumpers. They'll have like anything that's a jumper will have a J indication, like this is J16. That was J2. So I believe these to be fuses. So it'll either be enough of a fuse or it won't be. If it's not enough, it'll just pop it. chassis came out of that Panasonic that one of our family friends had and they uh, kept it on a porch covered porch screened in porch and down here the salt air eats everything to pieces including televisions so I got him another TV I put in I was you're not gonna put an LCD out in that environment I, got, I think they, they make them that work in the commercial environment but who's gonna pay that much money for one except for a business so I got him a nice Sony Trinitron out of the Goodwill and put down there beautiful CRT picture great sounds the XBR model has a little subwoofer in the back <clears throat> I was down there it was still working hopefully it keeps working but in the soft air it will probably die yeah 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 that's the auto off on my meter uh, I have a sneaking suspicion it won't last because uh the big 30 inch that i did the video on for y'all a long time ago it uh when i had it apart when it started the image bouncing problem with the horizontal i uh, had it apart and a lot of the traces inside were uh starting to turn green It is highly possible that something in here drew too much power and popped that fuse. And if that's the case, it'll pop it again eventually. Assuming it's rated high enough, it doesn't blow it immediately when I put power on it. But uh, I think it just died from old age. Planned obsolescence. Build apart long enough to last for a while and then it'll die. It's kind of like uh, current LCD TVs. Vibrant image, you better make sure you get a service plan with it. Because it will die shortly after the one time it runs out. Get my desoldering iron out of the way. I'm going to reheat this iron back up. Hope this works.
Good thing it wasn't any of these caps because getting them on Digikey would be fun. They're uh, 220 microfarad at 16 volt. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting them in the right heights because you got a shield that goes over the top of this. So you can't be putting big honking capacitors that stick up and there's really nowhere to, to really lay them down if you have to do them all. That was a problem I had when I redid a gateway monitor a couple years ago. I was finding the right, the right height capacitors. Stay hot yet? Where is the end of the solder hole? Too much sometimes is better than not enough because that's what you get on a lot of these boards or you get cold solder joints because they didn't put enough they uh don't put enough in at the factory Sorry for the terrible camera work. I need one of the uh, cameras with a remote. I have a standard def one that has the uh, remote, but this HD one does not. You can tell this was previously owned by a smoker. See so all the smoke residue. Putting that in the wrong way. Doesn't help none. Reconnect our CFLs. Do not want to mess around with these. One power is connected. Unless you want to get blast to the other side of the room or have your heart stop. I don't know what the output on these is, but it's probably a couple thousand volts to drive the CFLs. What we're going to do for now is temporarily tack a uh, not tack or temporarily put the screw in. 
for ground. Yeah, we know the uh, this is the main logic board. It's basically all your all the magic goes on in there. Probably the EEPROM for software. I'm sure uh, connections go up to here. And then uh, that's the front panel connector there. And then all your in and out voltages go through there and here. And we'll put a screw in here temporarily for grounding. Give it 12 volts. Stand my light, blue light. We have backlights, as you can see. <clears throat> Forgot to hook the uh, data cables up. Gotta be real gentle with these. You don't want to break these uh, flat flux. So that's what it was, bad fuse. See how long this one lasts. <laughs> so that was all there was to it. I don't know how suited that is for uh, this particular application, but like I say, it came out of a CRT board. CRTs pump a ton of power through them, so hopefully it's rated good enough. Alright, so we can start putting some more screws back in. Gotta figure out where they all went. I'm trying to think, there should be one there, one there. Jack tips, they don't last long. Well, good thing it wasn't something major like a diode or these uh, transformers went bad or something like that. Like I say, I'm pretty sure that is a fuse. So. machines and put a movie on it and let it run for a couple of hours. See if it blows up again.
just grounds this to the rest of the chassis is all it does. Put our shield back on. Being a magnetic screwdriver, if you want to hold the screw. Alright, I'll set the uh, panel back in the frame. Threaded screws or coarse thread for plastic, so make sure you put them back where they go. And the computer monitors are pretty much just like LCD TVs, especially Vizio LCD TVs. It's whatever, whatever parts they could get to build it with. So, like most of y'all probably don't know, but and I don't know if it still holds true or not, but like the original Vizios like the uh, $10 special I'm looking at here to look at myself. Uh, Vizio didn't build those TVs and they weren't made in America. They were made by a Chinese company called Amtran, I believe. And if you find the schematics for the boards, uh, you'll see Amtran, I think Industries or something like that, will be written on the uh, boards. So many screws. Come on. Come on. I've been an ass. I always like to, uh, when you're dealing with plastic screws, when you get them in there. If they'll behave. Get them in there, turn them back once to the click so the threads are lined up, and then they'll thread on right back home. Otherwise, you recut the threads, and when you do that, you risk breaking the uh, the uh, plastic that you're running the screws back down into. So, back to here, kind of click, and then it should go in easily. If it doesn't go in easily, then you're cutting new threads and you should stop. And, Start again. cable over here. Wake this on the laptop up. This is a $15 Core 2 Duo I got at the Goodwill because the keyboard didn't work and they didn't know how to fix the keyboard other than replacing it. When all it really needed was a little bit of persuasion and the ribbon cable department. Did we get it? Uh, I think I know what's going on. Let's 
see where are the function keys. I don't want you to go to sleep. Looking for the uh, transfer the panel connector over. There it goes. Too shabby. Think that's the auto adjust. Should be a menu button. Information. Oh, where's the confirm button on here? It's a. Uh, it that? No, that's up and down. No, I was wrong. It's, it's way off. It's actually uh, it's got twenty six thousand three hundred ninety three hours on the backlight. <laughs> With somehow or other seven thousand one hundred and five total on. Now how does that? How does the math work on that? So, all right. Well. That concludes this video. Uh, all I gotta do is put the cover back on it and put the stand back on it. And it's good to go for a while. Eventually, the uh, it'll either pop the fuse again, in which case there is a power draw problem, which I don't think there is because it would have probably popped it already. Or uh, we have a you know an inverter or something going bad. Alright, that concludes this video. I will catch you guys in another one. Like I, like I usually like to say in my videos, with a little bit of knowledge, a good soldering iron and a voltmeter, we can keep stuff like this out of the landfill.